after taking a look at each Forza Horizon game and showcasing each one's greatest strength and weaknesses. Horizon 3 was the one that I felt I didn't give enough credit to and attention towards just how special this game is. Longtime viewers of this channel know that about a few months ago, I made a much shorter, about six and a half minute long video on Forza Horizon 3, but this one is a much more analytical, much more in-depth look at Horizon 3's strongest features and why I feel that this game is the perfect arcade sandbox. Now what good is an open world racer? without an incredible map to race around in. And this is one of the top reasons Horizon 3 left such a strong first impression. Australia was a very different map to the first two games, with Horizon 2 especially being a little monotonous in certain sections while still being an absolutely fantastic map. Australia shies away from that completely and created by far the most diverse landscape so far until Forza Horizon 5, that is. Now let's look in depth at some of the locations of Horizon 3 and what makes them all so special. Let's start off with Surfer's Paradise, a bustling metropolis which is the first and only major modern city in a Horizon game. Full of skyscrapers galore, gorgeous oceanside views, and at night it is a photographer's dream come true. Once you've finished up with Surfer's Paradise, you can hop onto Horizon 3's massive highway. It's not necessarily my favorite one in the game, I prefer Horizon 2's, but it's a hell of a lot better than Horizon 4's. Now on this highway, I spent so much time doing roll races and top speed runs on it. It's just super long, straight road, and it's perfect for that. Now you can take this highway all the way down to the outback, where you can live out your Ken Block dreams, recreating a Gymkhana in the Redstone gold mine. You could drift the suburbs of Cooper Petty, take your favorite off-roader and go explore exploring and rock crawling the Ormiston Gorge, or even go racing at the airport with your friends. The Outback is a ton of fun with endless opportunities to make your own fun, with some truly epic scenery as well. Heading west will lead you to the Kiwa Valley, host to some of the best roads in all of Horizon 3. From the twisty dirt switchbacks of the mountain climb to the truly epic high velocity sweepers alongside the side and top of the Marunda Dam. Heck, even the Tinder Mill, which is one of the better maps for Infected if you've played that. The Rainforest is next up, and it's a great showcase of Horizon 3's new foliage and vegetation. It's so much fun to cruise through here, and at night, it can really be quite immersive. But it's not all just for cruising too. You can go off-roading and explore areas like the waterfall and see if you can find any hidden secrets or out-of-map glitches. But let's say you like a more suburban approach. Well, head on down to Byron Bay and slide through the side streets in your favorite drift cars or cruise right alongside the ocean. And if you like geographical landmarks, head over to the Twelve Apostles, one of Australia's best sites. And once you're done with that, the Great Ocean Road is waiting for you with major Forza Horizon 2 vibes just cruising right next to the ocean. There's a couple really amazing speed zones here too, and I absolutely love this section of the map. And finally, the Silver Sands Shipwreck. Take your favorite off-roader and just go wild on all of the danger signs and jumps and just get some crazy airtime here. Now one thing that was a major departure from the first two games with Horizon 3 is the inclusion and promotion of a lot more off-road and rally elements to the map. I'm a big fan of this. While of course I always prefer the on-road street racing, it's important to keep things fresh and mix up the gameplay, especially when it comes to introducing new players to the Horizon franchise. It's great to have off-roading as a new option for people who just kind of prefer that approach. And to go alongside that, off-roading is just really fun. I've seen so much criticism of Modern Horizon games being too off-road focused, which always makes me laugh as it's totally optional in these games. Forza Horizon 3 wasn't just a game changer in terms of the map. The single player campaign was completely restructured and revamped 
for Horizon 3 as well. It takes a lot less of a structured and strict approach compared to Horizon 1 and 2, but at the same time, it at least has a campaign mode unlike Horizon 4. Now let's explain the differences between Horizon 3's campaign and Horizon 4's campaign, and while I feel it is the far superior single player mode. Forza Horizon 3 starts you off as a first time Horizon Festival boss, tasking you with starting the Horizon Festival in Australia and building up the festival's reputation and growing a fan base through races, PR stunts, bucket lists, and showcase events. That main goal though, being to unlock the final showcase event and maxing out all festivals across Australia. When you first arrive in Horizon Australia, you start off with a showcase event to kickstart the fan base of your festival and introduce you to what you're going to be doing throughout the game. Shortly after your first showcase, you get to choose your first car, defining the class of your next championship. This is where something that Horizon 3 does is an actually an approach I quite like. Horizon 3 was the first Horizon game to introduce blueprints, where you could actually choose what type of car you want, how many laps you want to do, you could completely customize the event to whatever you would prefer. I really, really like this approach. Horizon 2 and 1s didn't let you do this, and while I'm fine with either approach, they're both great, I think the ability to completely customize the events, make them as long as you want or as short as you want, is a great feature. This is what I like to call Horizon 3's choose your own adventure gameplay. Horizon 3 doesn't limit you to doing strictly races. Do you want to do strictly races? Got it. But maybe you prefer blasting through speed zones and studying record airtime through danger signs and doing bucket lists and all of these PR stunts instead of races. Well, you can do this. These are both completely valid ways to progress throughout the campaign. And this was a very smart move in terms of diversifying and expanding the Horizon audience. Well, of course, you know, hardcore veterans like me would prefer a Horizon 1 approach. These games are not just for us. They have to be for the whole Xbox community. So in order to bring in new people who necessarily don't really want to just do races all the time, the ability for them to just go out and explore the world in their favorite cars is a completely valid reason. Besides, it doesn't even cut in in our fun as we can just make the races as crazy as we want. This game really marked a massive change in the Forza Horizon recipe. And of course, I would love the series to return back to its roots. I can learn to love Horizon 3's Choose Your Own Adventure style. It's a sandbox game and it's important to acknowledge this is the future of the series. It's not going to go back to Horizon 1 and 2's approach no matter how much I would like that to happen. But it's very important to realize it just will not happen considering how big the series has got. Now heading back into the campaign. Once you hit the amount of fans required to expand your festival, you head back to Byron Bay and you get a visual representation of your gameplay progression by seeing your festival site grow larger and fill up with even more fans. Being able to choose where you want the next festival to be really adds into this whole choose your own adventure style, where do you want to stay in Surfer's Paradise until you fully max it out? Go ahead. Do you want to expand the festival to as many sites as possible before slowly leveling them all up? You can do that as well. After playing the game for a few more hours, you are invited to your first street race. Street races in Horizon 3 are so important in this game, as completing a certain amount will unlock Midnight Battles. Midnight Battles are some of my absolute favorite races in Horizon 3. They're a more modern version of the Star Showdowns in Horizon 1, which we all know, one of my absolute favorite parts of that game. Win the race, you unlock the rival's car, which cannot be purchased in the auto show before you complete the race. This is what I like to see, rewarding you by playing the game by giving you the opportunity to earn exclusive vehicles by playing the game. It's something that is really missed in Horizon 4, except for the little festival showcase things that they have every week, which I'm a fan of that. But in terms of the general single player campaign, it throws super wheel spins and cars at you, and you just cannot feel any sense of satisfaction when it comes to that. Now the rest of Horizon 3 is up to you. Expand and race however you want until you unlock the final showcase. Now once you complete the final showcase, that's it. No big cash reward or exclusive car, just a roll credits and that's it. Now it's a little bit of a disappointing ending to me, but it's a hell of a lot better than 4's 
well, non-existent ending. And this kind of leads into Horizon 3's progression issues. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this as I've covered it many a time before. But at the start of the game, your starter vehicles are way too high end. BMW M4s and Shelby GT350Rs are not starter vehicles. Those are some pretty expensive cars, and to be able to start the game with them is a little weird to me. And adding into this, whenever you would expand a festival or unlock a new site, especially at the start of the game, it would give you a choice of certain vehicles for free. I remember expanding the Yara Valley and getting the offering of a modern supercar for free. Really? You're gonna give me free supercars? Ugh. I mean, hey, if you like that, go ahead, but man, that is not for me. Now, the final thing that must be said about Horizon 3's campaign, and don't worry, I'm gonna keep this short, and I'm gonna get back to all the good things in a second, but Horizon 3's campaign mode is what started Horizon 4's. All of the issues that were minor in Horizon 3 are major in Horizon 4, and it's because of the community that encouraged this behavior. I love free supercars. I love all this money. Well, look what happened. We got a game that did not allow you to enjoy a single player experience. And it sucks. And I think Playground has learned from their mistakes as they got a lot of backlash for that in 4. You know, they got some encouragement too, but trust me, a lot of the community was very vocal about these issues. And I, for one, am really, really hoping that this is fixed in Horizon 5. And it's tough for me to say whether it will or won't be. If it was a return to the more Horizon 3 style where, yeah, you get things a little too quick, that wouldn't be the end of the world for me. But if it's like 4, I'm not going to be happy with this. By far and away, the biggest switch in mindset in terms of gameplay and new additions to the Horizon franchise was with Horizon 3. This game started so many new features in the Horizon franchise. Let's go over some of my absolute favorite and why I think they're great to have in the game. First off, Forza Vista. One of the best parts about the Forza Motorsport games in the past, and the fact that Horizon didn't have it in the first two games was a bit of a disappointment, but it was so good to have it in Horizon 3. The Auction House. Another feature from previous Forza Motorsport games, allowing you to trade vehicles for money between players, and this is kind of also a mixed bag, because we know that the auction house can be kind of manipulated, and while yes, I think it definitely can be, I think that overall it's a good addition to add to the game and if you want to just get rid of some of the older cars that you don't use, and you just want some cash for them. In terms of customization, Need for Speed 2015 came out between Horizon 2 and Horizon 3, and I think that this was a big push for Forza to really step up their customization game. So they did, starting off with Wide Bodies. Wide Bodies were a fantastic addition. Personally, I don't like the look of a lot of Wide Body kits, but the vast majority of the community absolutely loves these, and I'm really happy that Turn 10 and Playground managed to add these in the game. Going alongside that, there were many, many new wheels added as well to the game. Horizon 1 and 2 had pretty good wheel selections, but they have nothing on 3 and 4. Adding into this, license plates and horn customization is something that we did not see before. Cars in the past just had no license plates, and the ability to personalize yours and make it as whatever you want, I absolutely love that feature. Obviously, same goes for the horns. In terms of cars, we also had the addition of Horizon Edition cars. This was a very interesting thing in the Horizon meta because you could often win these just from wheel spins and I'm a bit of a fan of this because I like having those rare exclusive cars and they would they weren't just a visual, you know, you get a gold license plate and that's it. You get boosts in terms of you get boosts in speed skills and drift skills. These cars were actually very useful in terms of giving you that advantage. Next up, customizable characters. I feel this one is not necessarily needed, especially because it's just you choose your avatar and that's it. You can't necessarily customize them that much. You can just choose which one you want, but you can also choose a name for your character. Forzathon events. This is something that is massive in Horizon 4, but 3 started it. When it came to the weekly challenges in Horizon 3, I like this approach so much more. You get a couple objectives, complete these set objectives, 
and you win the car. Whether it be setting a certain distance on danger signs or speed traps. Just you keep doing those and you get the car. I prefer this a lot more to the festival playlist in Horizon 4 where it's just, hey, do this championship every week. There's not really a variety in terms of what you're doing. But since the Forzathon was introduced in Horizon 3, this feature went crazy with Forzathon Live and all of these new things that are added into 4 and now even 5, so it's a big part of the Horizon series now. Finally, we have to talk about blueprints. Blueprints were a massive feature. I slightly mentioned these earlier in the video, but blueprints really changed the game, especially when it came to if you wanted to create your own bucket lists. You could just go wild you can choose the time of day, the soundtrack you want it to have, obviously the car, but you can set your own routes, and you could have so much fun challenging your friends with different bucket lists. This was a fantastic way to spice up the gameplay after you're finished with the campaign mode. When it came to multiplayer, Horizon 3 was a huge improvement as well, allowing a much more seamless multiplayer integration than before. With Horizon Group, you just, you know, Press a, open the pause menu, press Y, and you can invite your friends and they're in the game within seconds. Online adventure, also fantastic. This game is probably where I spent the most time online in any of the Horizon games. All of the game modes are great, they're fun, you can do anything from your classic races to infected, go wild. Multiplayer is a big part of Horizon 3, and it's not as big of a part as Horizon 4, where you need to play multiplayer in order to have any fun in the game. Horizon 3 stuck that perfect balance between if you wanted to play single player, you could have a blast. But if you wanted to play multiplayer with your friends as well, you can totally do that. Each way is equally as fun and it doesn't favor which, you know, one or the other. <laughs> Now really quickly, I want to talk about the DLCs. The DLCs in Horizon 3 continued the pattern that Horizon 2 set, with the first expansion being something new in terms of an environmental setting and a landscape setting, with the second DLC being some sort of a brand tie-in. The first expansion being Blizzard Mountain. This one was a ton of fun and the first time that we've seen snow in a Forza game. Blizzard Mountain wasn't my favorite DLC, I found it to be a little boring, but the map itself and the overall overall just aesthetic and feel of the DLC was great. Hot Wheels, on the other hand, was a ton of fun. I know it's unrealistic and it a bit silly, but I absolutely love it. It was a ton of fun and a throwback and a nostalgia trip towards when you were a kid playing with your Hot Wheels cars and your Hot Wheels tracks. It was a ton of fun and the little career mode that they had there was a great addition as well. Now last off, I'm just going to summarize some of the things that I mentioned in this video and kind of just explain really quickly the title of the video. Perfecting the arcade sandbox is something that's very tricky to do. Horizon 4, in my opinion, royally messed it up. There was no goal in the end to reach. Horizon 3, on the other, had this goal in the end, but what it did was say, here's your goal, but if you want to get to it, you can do it however you want. You can race, you can explore, you can do jumps, you can do this however you want. But in any case, the end goal is that final showcase event. And once you complete it, you roll credits, you've completed the campaign mode. Horizon 4, same general idea, but there's no end goal. And what this leads to happen is that Horizon 3 is so much more rewarding in that sense of, okay, I finished the game now, I know, you know, I'm done, I'm gonna go explore the rest of the map now, and just have a ton of fun in free roam, just go mess around, spend all the money I've earned throughout my campaign, and just, you know, have a blast. Where Horizon 4 tries to do that all the time. They try to say all the time that you're supposed to say, explore, have fun, spend all this money, we're gonna give you more money, we're gonna give you more cars, and it just doesn't work. There's no end satisfaction. It gives you all the satisfaction throughout the campaign without that end of completion. And this is why I feel Horizon 3 has that far superior campaign mode compared to 4. And personally, I don't even necessarily like this approach more than the first two games in the series, and compared to other racing games as well. I like having that structured approach. But again, as I said earlier in the video, I can totally deal with Horizon 3's approach. Giving you that end goal 
gold, but saying, hey, get to it however you want to. Okay, everyone. So I think that's going to finish up this video real quickly. I wanted to give you guys a quick update on some of the channel and stuff like that. Um, I, I'm going through a lot of stuff in real life, nothing serious, but I'm moving and I'm trying to get a new job. So videos are not going to be quite as frequent as I'm obviously going to take priority on focusing what's going on in the real life. You know, fortunately, things are looking really good, both in terms of jobs and moving. Everything is going really well. So don't be worried about that. So videos are going to be a little less frequent. And when it comes to the Horizon 1 Let's Play, I'm still working on that final episode and then the, the uh, ending episode. Don't worry, it's not going to be canceled. It's going to be out, but I just, I'm just going to request a little bit of patience when it comes to it. Still working on it and it's going to be out soon. Okay, thank you all so much for watching this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and, you know, leave a comment if you have any, you know, if you agree, do you have any constructive feedback? You guys, you guys already know. I love to hear stuff like that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.